Hello everyone and uh, thank you for joining us for our webinar in relation to pre-sprays, carpets, traffic lane cleaners or pre-sprays. This is a subject that many have requested that we discuss together. So um, I look forward to sharing some information and interesting points in relation to pre-sprays. The, I guess the topic is very close to my heart in the sense that it's probably the subject that I've been involved with the longest in my chemistry career, been discussing carpet cleaning challenges, including pre-sprays and the formulation of these products for well over 30 years now. So I'd like to share some notes and some, some of that experience with you. There's um, many things that have come across our path many challenges that we've been confronted with and we'd like to share that with you and um, hopefully help you to get some value out of this session. And something that you can um, also use as a point of value in your own business. So one thing that I do like to do in these sessions is also provide you with information that not only helps yourself, but also provides you with um, some tools you might say that can assist you in training your own technicians um, and your own staff. So um, we'll, we'll head into the whole subject of carpet pre-sprays. So I'm not only going to be talking in relation to the Acticam pre-sprays, I'd like to give you a little bit more of the background to um, pre-spray use, where they fit into the whole cleaning cycle to enable you to, um, let's say, make decisions in relation to what pre-spray you use, how you use them in a more um, educated, well-informed manner. So we'll start with the cleaning process and this is something where I, I normally begin pretty much with every training session because I verily believe that you absolutely need to understand more about the cleaning process if you are going to understand where the chemi chemicals and the various parts of the process fit in. So to fill in these steps that we all know, we've got our wet steam extraction which is what we're discussing today. We start off with um, vacuuming and then pre-spraying the, the area and our extract rinse and the dry, dry rake at the end. Now I wanted to just say a couple of points in relation to pre-vacuuming especially just while we're on this slide is that it is very very crucial that we understand the importance of vacuuming. Many many people give it a skip and simply because they say well the, the vacuum on my machine is that strong that it is um, it's going to remove all that in any case. Now, remember that around 80% of the soiling that you encounter on a carpet, in fact, on, on many floor types as well, hard floor types as well, is in fact um, particulate soiling, which is not dissolvable in any water type solution or solvent for that matter. So your cleaning agent that you're using it has in actual fact got no, uh, not a lot of benefits um, in relation to those dry particulate soils. Um, that are able to be removed with dry vacuuming. However, they do use up or expend a lot of the chemistry that you are wanting to, in fact, use for the 20% of the soiling that is left behind. So vacuuming is a very, very crucial part of the cleaning process. So I just wanted to give a, a strong note in relation to that. Um, the other point is that your regular backpack type vacuum cleaners are great for picking up bits of paper and lolly papers, etc. But you need a proper vacuum cleaner that has a um, has a brush in it when you are doing professional carpet cleaning. So um, the other steps follow through. We're all very familiar with them. Um, but just on this particular page, I wanted to just make a strong point in relation to the importance of pre-vacuuming when it comes to wet steam extraction. Where does the pre-spray or the function of the pre-spray fit into the cleaning process? So in relation to the cleaning process, I've got up here on the page the cleaning pile, which I've gone over before. Many of you are familiar with it. And I'd love to remind you that there's a very um, informative webinar already on our YouTube channel and specifically in relation to the cleaning pie. I'd really recommend that you go back and have a look at it if you didn't see it before. But in relation to the cleaning pie, we need to understand that chemical temperature, time and agitation. And I want to just touch on these factors very briefly to enable you to see as to where pre-sprays fit into this. So first of all, on our cleaning side of things, the emulsification is what we, what, what we use our chemicals for, soil suspension. Temperature is all around um, increasing the chemical solution activity. 
as you know, as a rule of thumb, the chemical activity of a, um, of a hotter solution, even if it's only by 10 degrees, I say with every 10 degrees centigrade increase in temperature, you double your chemical activity. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to clean twice as well because there's a lot of the other factors in cleaning, but it does mean that your chemical, you're getting a lot more out of your cleaning chemical activity. We also know that it softens grease and fats. The other thing about temperatures, we need to understand it too. We also need to understand, of course, where temperature is not going to help, such as with some of our proteins, particularly egg and, and blood. Fair enough, that's mainly spotting, but it's worthwhile just to remember that. Time, our dwell time, time for chemical to work, very important. Another factor with time is to remember that we do not want the pre-spray to dry on the carpet. So ensure that you gauge your cleaning process to ensure that your, the pre-spray does not dry on the carpet. And lastly, agitation. Agitation is something that I've found over the years that many, many carpet cleaners use very little to their advantage. Agitation has got a huge advantage in the cleaning process. As we know, it dislodges particulate soils, those particular soils that are trapped and embedded in yarns and fibers that don't come out with the dry vacuuming. Um, they may also be held there by the, um, the grease and the grime, the soil in that's already in the carpet. And the need for agitation to break down tough soils and bring fresh chemistry in touch with fresh soiling. Now, many, many people give the agitation a skip. I would highly recommend it. Anybody that has done encapsulation cleaning knows how effective agitation is in relation to the chemical cleaning process. There's very few of us that would just spray our dirty car with our car wash and then just simply hose it off. We all know that we've got to get in there with the, with the chamois or the um, soft broom, whatever the case may be. So do not overlook agitation. You can get much better results, much faster to much better success rates. So let's move on and see how this all fits together. Where I'm leading to with this is that pre-sprays are not the only thing responsible for the success of the job. And this particular page is, um, is something that has meant a lot to a lot of carpet cleaners that we've introduced it to. And the, the job description, as we've got on the, the first icon there, is such an important part to be able to discuss with your cleaners on any particular job. And this is these tools that I was speaking to you about that you can take back to your office, take back to your staff. Now, just going over that, the job description is knowing the substrates. What carpets are we cleaning? What is the fiber type? Do I know what it is? Do your technicians know? We still get many, many people phoning up in relation to problems with carpet cleaning, and they are unable to tell us as to whether the carpet is a nylon carpet or a wool carpet or a polypropylene carpet. That is a very severe lack of approach to carpet cleaning. Every single carpet, you need to understand what is the fiber for two reasons. One is that the rear fibers that have got particular soiling characteristics. And then the other side of it is, of course, we all know that there's many fibers that can be damaged by various types of cleaning chemistries. The second thing is the soiling. Do I understand the soiling that I'm in fact removing? Is it organic soiling? Is it more driven by synthetic oils, hydrocarbons? Is it more driven by a lot of particulate soiling? All of these different types of soiling require different approaches and can be easily overcome. A lot of problems can be easily remedied by just understanding a little bit more as to the soiling that we are removing. And then lastly, in relation to the cleaning supplies, the cleaning supplies I'm referring to is the chemistry in particular, but also the types of agitation. Do, do your technicians and do you in fact know the cleaning products that you've got on your shelf. Are you able to go to each bottle, you might say in the van and say, yes, that's a neutral pH, that is an alkaline one. This has got a lot of solvents in it. Do you know the chemistries that you've got in your cleaning van? This will enable you to much, much more effectively match them up with your requirements on the job. So you need to know that job description. Ensure that you know that job description and that forms part of the training with your staff. And then you're able to choose the cleaning process. You're able to determine the correct chemical, the correct dosage, at what temperature, the best dwell time to use it, and the type of agitation that best suits that particular job on hand. So there's two key factors that decide which pre-spray pre -spray chemistry that you need to use. The first one, the first one is the fiber type. So we go back to that job description. 
this is about knowing the substrates. Now, I've just got three of the most common carpet types that you will come in contact with. The first one is wool carpets. We do know a lot about. I do find carpet cleaners generally have a good knowledge of, of the, the, carpet, the carpet type characteristics. The challenge is that many of them don't know what it is on the floor itself. So wool carpets, chemical solutions must be neutral or weakly buffered. So a chemical solution may have a pH of 9 or 10, but it may be very weakly buffered. And that's still all right. That still passes the wool safe requirements. <clears throat> so in relation to wool carpet, we've mainly got a chemical damage alert. That's the key thing. The recommendation, of course, with any woolen carpet is look for that wool safe approved logo, such as on the Actigem Performance Plus. Then we've got polypropylene carpets with their affinity for oils, the static charge, as well as a smooth face fiber. So any bit of soiling that is left behind, even in the rinse water, will tend to show on the fibre, leaving it with an, a dull appearance. So in relation to polypropylene, typically it's a soiling challenge that we have. They are very, very resistant to virtually all of our carpet cleaning chemistries, thankfully so. And then lastly, our nylon carpets, fifth or sixth generation nylon carpets. We do know that we need to use solutions with a pH of less than 10, and they're also sensitive to cationic chemistry. They generally clean relatively well, and here again, it is a chemical damage alert. Just worthwhile mentioning some of our older nylons that um, are prior to the fifth and sixth generation nylons. Those older ones will typically fit into the polypropylene carpet section on this particular page. The factor that we need to look into in relation to choosing our pre-spray is the soil characteristics. Now, the first one is our organic soils. And these are found typically in restaurants, kitchens, but then through to the family home, our lounge rooms, our dining rooms, many of the kids' bedrooms. And here we have organic oils, fats, and, and typical grime. And in this particular case, the alkalinity that works best, the, the, the chemistry that works best is, is alkalinity, higher alkalinity, enzymes, and solvent chemistry is the most effective. Now, just remember this, that we have to now match that back in relation to what carpet it is. So on a polypropylene carpet, yes, we can use high alkalinity to conquer those particular types of soiling. But if we've got a wool carpet in a domestic home, of course, we can't use that high alkalinity. So we'll touch on that again um, a little bit later. And then we have our second type of soiling, which is dominated by synthetic oils, rubber, grime, for those people unlucky enough to be doing carpets that are coming out of factories typical warehouse soils, some office blocks are like this. Um, alkalinity and solvent chemistry is the most effective there. And then lastly, the <clears throat> particulate soils, which is a lot of our traffic lanes, whether they're in commercial office blocks, a lot of medical centers surprisingly have really severe issues with traffic lanes too, as well as even in domestic and hospitality areas. Now, the, the soiling driven there is by these particulate soils, Alkaline salts, not necessarily highly P, high pH alkaline salts, but alkaline salts, good soil suspension, some of our oxidation chemistries are very much effective on this type of soiling. And we'll match up the products with these descriptions shortly. So just before we move on to the products themselves, I just want to have a, make a couple of notes in relation to using pre-sprays effectively and particularly in how they fit in relation to the in-tank emulsifiers. So one option is to pre-spray only traffic lane clean, uh, only the traffic lanes. Um, some jobs may warrant this, um, particularly office blocks and um, areas such as that where the traffic lanes are predominantly the issue. If we're using a good in-tank emulsifiers, the areas that are lesser traveled will be quite adequately cleaned with the cleaning power that we get from our in-tank emulsifier. This definitely cuts down a lot on the pre-spray step and can save a lot in both chemical and, and labor. The second step is probably the most critical one is remember that pre-spray, the pre-spray is the emulsification step. This is where the cleaning happens. This is where all the soil is dislodged from the fibers and suspended. This is where it is all dissolved and solubilized, you might say. The rinse extract step with our cleaning wand is not the cleaning step. It is the rinsing step. If the carpet is not coming clean at that point in time, remember that it is a rinsing step. It is not advised at all to keep on using the carpet cleaning wand 
more and more over the same area of the carpets to try and get it clean because you have got very, very little cleaning power left at that point in the cleaning process. You've got very little chemistry left available to you, your pre-spray is gone, and all you're doing is you're wetting out the carpet more and more, sinking the moisture further down into the carpet, backing even into the underfelts, into the floorboards, far beyond what the suction of the machine is able to remove. So if it's not coming clean at that step, you need to put the carpet cleaning wand down and go back to your pre-spray, put more pre-spray on, give it an agitation, and then pick up your cleaning wand again. One good thing is to coin the term that it is a rinsing wand. Use that word rinsing wand with all your technicians as opposed to describing it as your cleaning wand. It is your rinsing wand, not your cleaning wand. The third point there is to do not over apply the pre-spray. You may not be able to extract it all. Remember that it's sinking further and further down into your carpet. Pre-spray does not need to be over applied. And then lastly is neutralization. In many instances, the power of more strongly alkaline pre-sprays can be used providing they are neutralized with a acid rinse. So in many cases, you can enjoy the, the power of that additional alkalinity, especially on um, organic grime, and uh, then bring the carpet back to a, a acidic nature with your, with your acid rinse. So that is a very important point just to remember. So moving on to the Acticam pre-sprays, we put a lot of time and effort over the years into the Acticam pre-sprays in not just coming up with, you might say, the cheapest and the best smelling pre-spray on the market, but rather we've spent a lot of time in incorporating advanced grease cutting and soil release technology into these pre-sprays. Thanks in, in a large part to our collaboration with many of the advanced chemical raw material manufacturers in North America and Europe, which we have been put in touch with, um, particularly in the 90s and then through into the 2000s that we've maintained um, good collaboration with and, and built our relationship with. So we're able to bring to the Australian market free sprays that are every bit comparable with what the international market enjoys and able to put in a lot more features into these. So let's have a look at what we typically have available. <clears throat> The first one there is the Performance Plus, which is our which is our workhorse pre-spray. Typically, that's the first one that people pick up or think about when they think of pre-sprays. The beauty of it is, is that it is both wool safe and clean seal approved. So wool safe provides us with that assurance that it is safe to use on all of our wool carpets, and for that matter, safe to use on virtually all of our um, well, let's say, a portion of our upholstery as well. When you go and talk about some of our more delicate cottons and what have you, we'd want to go to the NCAP fine fabric, and that's coming up in another webinar. The clean seal approval, also done by the WoolSafe organization, certifies it for safe use on nylon and synthetic carpets, including your fifth and sixth generation carpets. So very important certifications, those, and very important for your marketing to your clients, to be able to tell your clients that you are, in fact, using um, certified products on their precious investment. So very strong soil suspension technology, polymer anti-resoiling technology, which is important. And lastly, of course, it's safety and ease of use, both safety to the fiber, but then also to the technician and the, and the homeowners. Very, very low VOC content, people with hypoallergenic allergies, etc., including your technicians, very, very good product to use in that regard. Ideal, of course, for our wool carpets, for the fifth generation nylon carpets and upholstery. Then moving on to the Performance Gold. Performance Gold was designed particularly around, uh, let's say, as being a big brother to the Performance Plus. It is um, got very, very strong soil suspension technology. It is more concentrated than the Performance Plus. It has a slightly higher pH, but it is weakly buffered, which means that it is safe to use on all of your wall-to-wall -wall wool carpeting. Certainly not as safe as the Performance Plus on more of your delicate wools, um, such as found in area rugs and some of your delicate fibers on um, upholstery, etc. But all of your wall-to-wall -wall wool carpets, fifth generation nylon, sixth generation, the Performance Gold is a fantastic product. The number one reason why it was developed was around people cleaning very highly soiled carpets, such as in restaurants and pubs and clubs, where you have got a, a huge amount of stubborn soiling, but the carpets may be an Axminster wool carpet. So you still need something that is going to care for the carpet fiber. And that's where Performance Gold came in. 
Now, many people have taken Performance Gold on and used it um, as their everyday workhorse product as well. And that's fantastic because you get good um, dilution rates out of it as well. Now, the two key specialty pre sprays is the Clean Force. Now, this is a powdered product. You get all the power of alkaline cleaning action out of this product. Very, very powerful enzyme action there with protease, amylase, lipolase, these different enzymes targeting all these soiling, which regular surfactants and regular detergents don't um, tackle very well. So we've got a huge amount of cleaning power in the clean force. It quickly dissolves and got a very, very good, effective grease cutting solvent package in it. So the pH is higher. So when we're talking about cleaning older nylons and polypropylene, an absolute go-to product. So I do know that many people use it on other carpet types as well, and they bring the pH down with a acid rinse and, and that, that's fine if you have got the, the skill to do that. But certainly Clean Force is a product which has become very, very popular in this space. Polyprop Plus can be almost looked at as a liquid version of the Clean Force. The name suggests it's, um, it is used predominantly on polypropylene and olefin, but also is an absolute fantastic product, the um, heavier soil situation. So very, very powerful alkaline solvent cleaning action. So moving across to Acticam boosters, and many people have asked us to include this in the presentation. And boosters are very important. The one thing we do need to just remember with boosters is it's not something that you should be using with every single job. If you're using boosters with every single job, um, you need to ask yourself as to whether you're using the, the, the correct choice of Acticam pre-spray. And you also need to just ask yourself as to whether you are using them at the correct dilution. And secondly, as to whether the rest of your cleaning process is in fact correct, shouldn't you maybe be adding in a, a different type or adding in agitation, etc. So boosters or additives are typically for those unique, difficult situations. So we've got the OxyBoost Plus, which is a oxygenated additive, which is essentially like your powdered version of peroxide. And it is a very, very powerful stain remover. We know it brightens colors, removes a lot of that dull and discoloration on our older nylons, on our polypropylenes, very, very effective on that to provide that oxidizing ability in there. So OxyBoost is very, very powerful. Uh, many people do use, also use the, let's say the liquid version of hydrogen peroxide, which is, as we know, favorite for use um, with en encapsulation chemistry, which once again is one of our um, upcoming webinars. The Acticam POG is a solvent booster and is very, very powerful on your tough oily stains. Um, it is a relatively low VOC product as well, so it doesn't impart those strong hydrocarbon um, odor to it, but it's rather a fresh citrus odor. It is safe on all carpet types and great for this. You've got troublesome issues with food and particularly industrial oils and grease. Lastly, the Coilorial Boost is a somewhat of a unique product to Acticam. It is a concentrated blend of modern cleaning and stain removal technology. Those who use it absolutely love it. One really nice thing about it is you can use it across all carpet types and seriously boost the cleaning efficacy of your pre-spray and your tile cleaning detergent as well, might I, might I add. But it gives exceptional results in, in heavy traffic lanes and general heavy grime, food and industrial oils. So it's a very much an all-rounder. Now, I'm just going back to that page that we spoke in relation to the carpet fibers, because I just want to show you where the chemicals now fit in, in relation to the carpet fibers, and we've discussed the different chemistry. So just, just do a, a double check on ourselves as to where they all fit in now. So in relation to wool carpets, Performance Plus, as we know, with the wool safe approval, is our go-to. Performance Gold, also safe on all of our wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, but not our more delicate wool carpeting such as area rugs and upholstery. Boosters, we can safely use Code World Boost and the Acticam POG. On polypropylene carpets, we, of course, Polyprop Plus heads the list. Together with Clean Force, they are the two ideal products for polyprop carpets. Performance Gold and Performance Plus are also safe on polyprop carpets. Our boosters, all three of our boosters are safe for use on polyprop carpets. And lastly, on fifth and sixth generation nylon carpets, Performance Plus and Performance Gold are our go-to products. And once again, all three of our boosters are safe on the fifth and sixth generation nylon carpets.
I just wanted to add a note in relation to dilution of pre-sprays. Very, very important if we get our pre-spray dilution correct. There's pretty easy to dilute on a pump-up sprayer. However, many people struggle with the hydro force. Now we've got some really nice dilution charts. Now I've just got the one up on the up on the screen there, which is a uh, one to four ratio. That's a no tip. Now we do also know that there is various other tips available. The one to eight, which is a yellow tip and a one to 16, which is a white tip and the one to 32, which is a, um, a brown tip. And so we have charts for each one of those, which gives us exactly on the left hand side, what the dilution is that we're aiming for, how much we need to put in of the chemical into to make a five liter solution in your hydroforce bottle. Um, and then we've also got it just for a one liter solution. So that you can use that to multiply up to whatever amount of final solution you want to make. And then we get on the far right hand side the equivalent dilution too, which gives you some idea as to if you're using a pump up sprayer or seeing the percent. So um, if you're interested in getting a copy of that dilution chart, please um, email us back. We will be sending a link out obviously in relation to this and there will be a link to the complete dilution chart with each four, each of those four um, tip types. And the last thing in relation to that, which we're also going to be providing you is a um, it's just a bit of a method as to how to check that your hydroforce is actually diluting at the correct dilution because your tips do wear over time so that is very handy that is certainly one thing to look forward to so at the last is just a page on what makes a good pre-spray for for carpets and one thing i did want to just point out is the um what many of you are aware of is that the 5% of your cost of your, of your whole job is chemicals. So if you, if you have a look at it, your total cost of, your, of the job that you're doing, say it is $100, it's only gonna be about $5 that you're gonna be spending on your chemicals. So in other words, $95 is gonna be everything else. The labor is gonna be the largest one. And then you might even have petrol or diesel for your, for your truck mount. Um, etc. But five dollars or five percent, five dollars out of a hundred is where your chemicals come in. So we want to make sure that we pack every single bit of value we can into that five dollars or that five percent. In relation to to that, where where you're going to get those that that value from is in pre sprays that have things like third party certifications. As we know, the wool safe and a clean seal approval. Um, we know that quality products provide us with the fiber care that is both seen fiber care and unseen fiber care. Secondly, does that 5% give you the technical backup from the supplier, from the chemical provider, manufacturer? Are you able to talk to the, the chemist? Are you able to talk to the manufacturer of that product? You get the technical backup that you require on many of your um, difficult challenges. Secondly, a good pre-spray should be able to give you a large proportion of your spot and discoloration removal. And lastly, just simply down to um, cleaning performance, which includes your cleaning ratios. So ensure that that 5% that you're using is packed with value. The pre-sprays are so much more than just a bottle of liquid. So thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Really appreciate um, your interaction and any of the questions that come through we haven't answered, we'll certainly answer in the white paper and look forward to some of those dilution charts. And um, finally, look forward to the emulsification webinar next month. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.